it's Kaylin May here for another video. Thanks for sticking around. So if you're new, please uh, subscribe. Everyone should be new. This is a brand new channel. Um, and we're going to talk through my quarantine book stack today. So if you haven't heard, <laughs> there's a pandemic going on. Um, so we are all at home and myself, I'm in my third week of social distancing or quarantine or whatever you want to call it. And I've been struggling a little bit. So I decided I was going to take all of the books on my shelves that I've been meaning to read and I haven't read, and I'm just gonna try and read through as many as possible. And so I decided this before I started uh, with y'all, but I'm going to count any of the books that I've read on quarantine um, in this stack. I'm gonna tell you which books I've read, which books I'm currently reading, and which books I'm going to read on this quarantine. So. Um, buckle up, there's a lot of books involved. I have bought these books or been given these books over the years and they've just sort of accumulated on my bookshelf and I haven't had the motivation or the time to just get through and read them, but now I've sort of started a challenge for myself. I want to try and get through all of them before the end of quarantine. So first we've got the books that I have read on quarantine. So I just want to start with uh, Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. This book was given to me by a friend, thanks Esther, uh, when she came and visited the last, um, it was like almost, what, two weeks before this whole thing started, so she snuck in right under the wire. Um, but this book is a book that follows a woman who goes back to her hometown, she's a reporter, and she's covering two deaths of little girls, it's like a murder mystery. And it was, it was good. I read it very quickly, probably in a day or two. And um, I think, I think Gillian Flynn's later books are better. I really, I read Gone Girl and I liked, I think it's like a little more developed. This one felt at times a little heavy handed, um, but it, I enjoyed it. I would, I don't know, I guess I would give it like a six out of 10. And I did then immediately binge the HBO series with Amy Adams, uh, just to keep the storyline going. And I enjoyed that. I actually almost, this is a terrible, probably unpopular opinion, liked it better than the book. So if you're into murder, <laughs> if you're into sort of thriller type books, um, if you wanna really explore a family dynamic, this is your book. The one thing I will say that I really liked about it is that all of the characters were um, terrible. Like they were all just, no one was a good person. No one was a completely good person. There was no protagonist you were just completely rooting for. Everyone made bad decisions. Um, and Gillian Flynn herself talks about how she wanted to show that women can be bad or that you know not every woman has to be good. Um, and I think she takes that to a more nuanced place in Gone Girl, but this one, um, I liked it. I thought that, that was an interesting dynamic. So, so that is Sharp Objects. The second book I read on quarantine was Where the Crawdads Sing. So this book has gotten a lot of acclaim. It's on, it has been on the New York Times bestseller list. Reese Witherspoon picked this for her book club. It's by Delia Owens and it takes place, is it in North or South Carolina? North Carolina. It takes place on the North Carolina coast. And I also devoured this one. This one ironically also has a murder plot in the middle of it. Um, I did not see the ending coming and I will say the descriptions of the marsh of the swampland, sort of the nature of the area were so compelling. It took me out of my, you know, one bedroom apartment in Los Angeles and really transported me uh, to a different place. They, it was just gorgeous the way that it was written. I would say actually one of my complaints about Sharp Objects was the prose. It was like a little clunky, but this made up for that. This had these lush descriptions and I, I loved it. I would give this book like an 8.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed that. There's a little bit of a love story. So it's a little bit of love, a little bit of murder, a whole lot of nature. I would, I would actually highly recommend this book. I think this is a great book to read on quarantine. That's where the crawdads sit. The other book I finished on quarantine was The Time In Between by Maria Duenas. This book uh, was given to me by my mother like two years ago, maybe even more, and she asked me to read it. And I, full disclosure, didn't start this book on quarantine, so I can't completely claim this one, but I did read the last like 400 pages on quarantine. I got maybe 300 pages through it. 
Uh, it takes place in Spain and Morocco and Portugal in uh, the time in between the Spanish Civil War and the Second World War, so in the late 30s. I really enjoyed getting to travel through uh, these pages. I thought the descriptions of Spain uh, in that time were both heartbreaking and also really interesting. Morocco uh, made me fall in love with a city I've never been to, and then Portugal made me really want to visit Lisbon, actually. But I ultimately really appreciated reading this on quarantine because it's, it's a story of resilience in a time of a lot of suffering. The Spanish Civil War really decimated Spain and really, really devastated its people. And uh, yet st Spain still stands. And uh, the Second World War, as you know, I'm assuming, held a lot of atrocities and was a, re a time of a lot of fear, a mistrust of government, uh, a lot of people who didn't know what their next steps were. And so this follows a seamstress uh, turned spy in that time. Uh, and so that, that global context, the historical context for maybe what we're all going through now made this a really good read during quarantine. I will say there are a lot of different stories in it. Like it follows her life over a period of time. And the first half of the book is a little slower than the last half, the last hundred pages I sped through. Um, but I would recommend it. I would give it, yeah, I think I, on my Instagram, give it like a seven out of 10, um, 7.5. And my one thing is it, it was a little long. I don't think it needed to be over 600 pages. I think the story could have been told just as well in under 600 pages. Okay, the next book I wanna tell you about is a book that I'm reading right now, uh, which is How to Kill a City by Peter Moskowitz. Um, which is about gentrification, inequality, and the fight for the neighborhood. So this is an incredible book. It's a nonfiction book. It is sort of an expose, if you will. It explores four cities, uh, New Orleans, Detroit, San Francisco, and New York, and it outlines the four stages of gentrification. I almost want to make an entire video about this book. It is really incredible and also just very on the nose for what's happening, especially in Los Angeles right now, especially in the neighborhood I live right now. Um, I am probably a part of a gentrifying force right now. Um, but it is compelling, it is easy to read, it brings in a lot of other thinkers. It actually almost feels like um, in a window to urban planning a little bit, uh, but understanding the governmental and political forces behind gentrification, it's not just hipsters moving into neighborhoods, um, but there's sort of a macro system to this and that system unsurprisingly is tied to disenfranchisement of the poor um, and you know a lack of government funding for social services trickle down economics Ronald Reagan and uh, racism so it's not the most uplifting of books but it's beautifully written um, I wanted something a little different I've been reading a lot of uh, fiction and this is a nonfiction so I'm almost done with this um, but this is what I am currently reading and I, at the moment, would highly recommend it. And I might do a fuller review um, and a little chat about gentrification, who knows, um, when I'm done. But this is what I'm reading right now. So that completes what I've read and what I'm reading. Now we're on to my to be read TBR, I believe it's called in this little booktube world. Uh, booktube, look at me throwing that word around like I have used it before. Um, so these are the books that I would like to read or continue to kind of make my way through. So I've divided them into two categories, nonfiction and fiction. Um, and I'll just start with the nonfiction because it's a pretty short category. Um, but yeah, these are books I've been wanting to read. This is Oliver Sacks, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales. This is a book written by a professor of neurology, Oliver Sacks. He's written a couple of other books that I've read um, and he actually died a few years back. But I, I think that this is gonna be very interesting in terms of like the book about gentrification is about the outer systems and sort of these external systems. This is about the mind. I got this at the bargain on a bargain cart outside of a used bookstore. So I'm excited to read it, got it for one whole dollar. I think it's gonna be really interesting. So that's next, not next necessarily, but that's one of the things on my list. Okay, the next nonfiction book I'm reading, and I'm actually 20 pages into this, how far into this? 26 pages into this, I started this in the bookstore when I bought it, so again, I'm being a little generous with myself for quarantine reading, but it's like 300 pages, so 20 pages is barely anything. 
This book is They Were Her Property, White Women as Slaveholders in the American South. It's by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. This is not a light book or a happy book, but I think it's necessary uh, as we all reckon with this country's history of racism uh, and violence and colonialism. Uh, reading books is one way to learn more and Stephanie E. Roger, Jones Rogers, Stephanie E. Jones Rogers is a professor of history, an assistant professor of history at UC Berkeley. Um, so she is a very well-researched author and um, I think that this is important because oftentimes white feminism ignores race and we think a lot about, um, and as, as white women, we think a lot about how sexism plays a role in our lives and we don't stop to think how maybe we have either historically or presently played a role in other forms of oppression, specifically racial oppression. I'm interested to read uh, this book and while it is sobering and difficult, I think it is important. Now for something completely different. My friend Iris, who I have the podcast Two Thought Bitches with, um, gave me this book, God, months ago to read, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. We quote her all the time on the podcast and I've been meaning to read it and I just haven't had the time or the capacity, but I've been really wanting to and I know one of her friends wants to read it too, so I need to get it back to her. Um, but I think that uh, it could be a good one given the circumstances. I'm a perfectionist. I am somebody who has a lot of stories I tell myself uh, about what I need to be doing and how I need to produce things in the world. And so this might help me um, think more about maybe vulnerability and courage and change and, and uh, Brene Brown's phrase, a wholehearted life. So this is more like almost self-helpy. So that sets it apart from basically everything else on this list. But I wanted to include it anyway, because it is something I'm gonna read. It's a shorter book, it's 120 pages, so this will probably be a pretty fast read, but I'm hoping it might maybe help my mental health in this crisis a little bit. So the next book I have is a set of poems. Um, it, are they poems or are they short essays? I don't really know what they are, actually. This is called uh, Everyday Enchantments by Maria de Blasey. And uh, this book was given to me by my mother. I think this woman actually, the author used to be a waitress at one of my favorite restaurants in Albuquerque. And uh, that's what my mom said and I could be totally wrong. Um, Everyday Enchantments is a love letter to the magic of everyday life, the sweet moments and the profound that we often overlook in our hurry to get from one place to the next. This collection of essays. So this is a collection of essays. Um, reminds us to escape into the ordinary, find beauty in a simple cup of tea or rereading a beloved novel, and joyfully let our world turn upside down when synchron synchronicity strikes in the form of wrong turns down forgotten lanes and unexpected midnight conversations with the moon. So I think this looks lovely. I love that it's a local New Mexican author. That makes me happy. Um, I really do want to support uh, the community I come from. So I will be reading this. Um, and it looks like it's going to remind me of home a little bit. One of the poems is on red, or one of the, excuse me, one of the essays is titled On Red Chili Stew, which is something I haven't had since I've been home. So this is definitely something I think that I can escape into. Okay, so we've got the essays, we've got the nonfiction, we've got the books I've read. Now comes the fiction books, my next little stack for you guys. So a lot of these books have been given to me um, a lot of these books I'm realizing have been given to me from my mother, so thanks mom. Um, and I'll run, down, run through these. Um, but the most, I would say the majority of the books I read are fiction books. So unsurprisingly, here we are. Okay, the first one is The Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet. Uh, it is by Jamie Ford. And my mom recommended this book to me. This follows a Japanese American uh, girl in the 1940s who was interned uh, during World War II and her friendship with uh, a Chinese American boy um, who later, fast forward 46 years, finds I think her things um, in, a, in an old hotel. So I'm, I'm interested in what this, um, what this holds. My mom said it was very sweet. So this might be a good read next, who knows? 
the next one I have to read is The Prisoner of Heaven by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I think this is another Spanish author. Yeah, he divides his time between Barcelona and Los Angeles. So if I really want to escape into Spain again, here's this one. I realized in the past YouTube video I said I wanted to travel to Spain and now I'm like reading all these books from Spain. So very clearly there's a theme, but I promise I'm interested in way more things than just Barcelona. To read this, this sounds like this actually takes place or it takes place in the 50s, but um, there's some going back into the 1940s and the early days of Franco's dictatorship. So this actually might take place like right after the time in between. So that would be, that could be an interesting thing. Read us at that setting. Okay. The next book I have on my list is Cloud Atlas. This is like, it's a heavy book, um, physically. So I remember that this was like a well-regarded book for a long time. And it just says, this is a brilliantly original fiction that reveals how disparate people connect, how their fates intertwine, and how their souls drift across the time like clouds across the sky. I think that's really interesting, how disparate people connect. That feels appropriate right now. Um, I have kind of been intimidated to start this book truly just because of how heavy it is um, for a long time, but now's the time and here's the place, so I might be reading that. The next is Waiting by Ha Jin, uh, which is has won the National Book Award and the Pul it was a Pulitzer Prize finalist. And this book I got in a free little library on the way to dinner one day in Pasadena. Okay, so this looks like this takes this takes place in China and follows the story of a man who is in an arranged marriage to a woman he doesn't love. Um, and also in love with a woman that he wants to leave his wife for. So I have no idea what to expect from this, but I've heard great things about it and I will be interested to read it. The New Yorker says it's a suspenseful and bracingly tough-minded love story. So fascinated. The next book, now for something completely different, is Major Pettigrew's Last Stand. This is Helen Simonson. And uh, this takes place in England. The major leads a quiet life, valuing the proper things that, that Englishmen have lived for in, by for generations. Honor, duty, decorum, and a properly brewed cup of tea. I love British books. <laughs> I love escaping into Britain. So I am excited to delve into this one. This seems really sweet. This will be an interesting book, or a lighter book to intersperse the heavier ones. Okay, The Night Tiger by Yang Se Chu. I might have butchered that. I'm so sorry. I've heard, again, really good things about it and I really want to read it. It's another Reese Witherspoon book club. Maybe I'm, I should just follow her suggestions. It's just, it started a little slow, so I put it down. But ultimately, I think it's going to be a really good book. I've heard from other people who have said that, again, with the, even with a slow start, that it has a lot to offer. So I'm excited. I'm interested to read it. Okay. This book, Harper Lee, Go Set a Watchman. This, as uh, you probably all know, um, is by the same author who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. There was some scandal about this. I need to go back and read to see if that's true. But I think that people um, said that it sort of was published against her will. Let me look that up. And if that's the case, I'm a little conflicted on whether or not I'm going to read it. So I think I was given this by my grandmother. I actually have no idea how I got this book, but I think I'm looking it up now. It looks like it is sort of being accepted as being the first draft To Kill a Mockingbird, and that there are many passages that got used again. It got written before To Kill a Mockingbird. And so I do know that it has, um, it has mixed reviews and it has people who didn't like that it was published. So we'll see, this book is probably, lower on my list. Oh my gosh, my hair is in it. How did that happen? This book is lower on my list to read for sure. So we'll see. And then the last one here uh, is Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. This I think I got from either my mother or my grandmother. So this tackles the Underground Railroad in the Annabelle South and I haven't started it. I am interested to start it. Um, I think I'm going to be like rotating through genres and um, and I'll let you know what I think, but this comes highly recommended from a very good friend of mine who I trust their literary opinion. So that's it. Those are my books. Let's see. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve books to read, four books read. <sighs> if I can do this, I'll have read 16 books. I'll total the pages. I'll put them here. And um, that's the amount of pages I'll have read in quarantine. So wish me luck. And as I get through some of them, maybe I will review them. At the very least, I'll be putting them on my Instagram, which you can find down here. So please uh, follow me on Instagram. And then of course, the classic, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Um, we're gonna have another video up on Sunday. Don't forget to like uh, this video, put on the bell for notifications. I figured out what that is now, so you can be notified when a new video comes out. Chat with me in the comments. Tell me, have you read these books? Did you like these books? What do you think about Harper Lee's Ghost at a Watchman getting published? Um, let's talk about gentrification. Let's talk about Spain and the Civil War and their Civil War. Uh, tell me if you have any other novels you think I should read. If I get through all these books, I'm going to order some books from a local bookstore online. Um, so stay tuned for a potential book haul, but be patient with me because I've got a lot of reading to do. All right. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you next time.